Today, I'm trading my hiking boots for high tops. I'm going to do some urban mapping. One of the things that I love most about the location that I'm going to shoot today is the level of detail. This whole building is made from hand-carved granite. And so there's not a lot of straight edges to it. It's primarily rough edges, detailed, uh, chiseled faces in the side of the building. Uh, one of the things I hate the most about this location is that there's a few tall trees and a couple of them hang down pretty low, which causes a lot of shadowing in the, uh, the pictures, which can cause holes in my 3D model. But I think I've got a way around that, a uh, way to fix it. So we're gonna find out. Fortunately for me, I have a great visual observer today. He usually does a pretty good job. Okay, that's not true. He's pretty lazy and just sits there. For planning the flight, I'm going to use my favorite Android application, Drone Harmony. This app just came out of beta and you can test it for free for 30 days. It not only does mapping, but it also has features for conducting inspections and it allows you to create some really sweet cinematic video shots. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. I'll start by creating my flight path for my Nadir images. Normally, I am strongly against using a crosshatch grid pattern because it takes more pictures, which take more time to process. However, this is a complex model and it needs a complex solution. So I guess that means I'm using the crosshatch grid pattern. Once I create my flight area, I then select my takeoff and landing point. Next, I'll select my altitude and course direction. One thing about Drone Harmony, it's very intuitive and it creates the most efficient flight path to capture the least number of photos. But for this model, I don't really want efficient. I want a better angle. So I'll create a flight path that does not line up parallel to the buildings. Then I'll create a second flight path that's going in the opposite direction. On both flights, I'll use the same altitude and angle of the camera, which I'm going to set at 45 degrees. That way it'll capture the sides of buildings. I will make my overlap 75 on the side and then 75 on the front, mainly because, well, it's my model and I can make it the way I want. Now that my flight plan is done, I'll set up the camera. For these first two flights, I'm going to set it to shutter priority and then put the shutter at one thousandth of a second. Then I'm going to set my ISO and aperture to automatic. And down here at the bottom you can see the letters EV. That's the exposure level. Since it's bright and sunny, I set that to slightly underexposed. That way my images don't get blown out with light. Then I put the white balance on sunny and find a good color filter that I like. In this case, I'm going to use Film H. I'll make a few adjustments that I normally don't need to make in Drone Harmony, but since I altered the flight path, I have to make these adjustments. Now, I'm ready to launch. Okay, now I finished my first two missions. And all I have left is my point of interest mission. I'm going to use the DJI Go app, but that's only because I have not tried it in Drone Harmony yet. If you notice, the red bar at the top says Update Required. Well, I strongly suggest that you never update your firmware until you have time to test it out first. I've actually seen when an update will cause the drone to malfunction, and that can be dangerous. I'm going to set the shutter speed to 800th of a second with the ISO and aperture set to auto. Just like before, I set the white balance to sunny and I'll set the color filter to blue. Then I'll make a few other small adjustments and then launch.
All I'm going to do is fly around the top section of the building, being sure not to capture any images with the sky in view. Then I'll lower the altitude and circle the building again. I may even drop down one more level before I'm done, just to be sure that I've covered the building completely. I want to capture as much detail as possible. And to capture that shaded area under those low-hanging trees that I was talking about, I'm going to use a regular camera, or I might even use the drone to capture the terrestrial pictures. And that just means that I'm taking pictures from the ground. All right, now that I have all the pictures I need, let's start processing. I load my 700 pictures into Pix4D and choose the 3D model template. I then draw a processing box around my project so that I have nice straight edges in my final 3D model. And then I'll process step one. Now I'm ready to start the project. After step one is complete, it's time to make some manual tie points so that I can merge the different layers together. There's a couple of reasons that this happens. One is color and contrast. Because the nadir pictures are taken while the lighting is a little different than it is for the obliques, it causes the software to place the point cloud in different locations. To fix this issue, Pix4D recommends that you create two projects, one with the nadir images and one with the oblique images. But I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm going to create one project and then merge it together after that. So what I do is use tie points on the images from as many different angles as possible. When adding tie points, be sure to only add them to the spots that have a clear view to that point. Of course, I'm probably adding more points than I need, but it's better to have more than not enough. After creating a minimum of three manual tie points, I can re-optimize. I'll probably create four or five before I'm done. And now I'll go to the top menu and click on Process, then go down to Reoptimize. All right, that'll take a little bit, but when it's done, everything should be in one single layer. Now that it's finished, let's take a look at it. It looks okay but the point cloud needs to be cleaned up just a little bit and then I can regenerate the mesh. Then it should be done. The way I normally do it is tick the box for triangle mesh and then I'll find the areas that don't look very good and I'll clean those areas up. Sometimes I can just click on the editing tool up here and highlight the points that need to be deleted and that's good enough. But sometimes there is something in the way, a building or some other object that I don't want to delete. And so I have to then classify the points behind that object. Let me show you an example. All right, so this tree doesn't look as good as I think it should. So I'll just cut a little bit off of it. But to clean the tree up, when I highlight the tree, it also highlights the points on the ground. Since I don't want to delete the ground, that's not a good option. So what I normally do, for instance, I'll take this building and I will classify the whole building by highlighting all of the building. Then I'll come up here to the top drop down menu. I'll put it on buildings and then hit assign. Of course, you have to make sure that the box is not ticked that says buildings, otherwise, it won't disappear. Let me get this other small piece out of the way real quick. 
All right, now that that's out of the way, that allows me to uh, then select some of the points from this tree. Then I can go up to the top, to the drop down menu, and select disabled, and then assign those points to the disabled category. Now this is the easiest way that I've found to delete the points or to hide the points that you don't want. Once you've cleaned up all of the points that you want, you make sure that the only boxes that are ticked are the ones that you want to use. So normally I put everything I don't want in the disabled category and everything else can stay. After that, I'll go back up here to the top to process and scroll down to regenerate 3D mesh. All right, once the mesh has been generated and it looks as good as you want it to, then you're either done or you can create a fly through. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can create your fly through and then you even have the option to output that video file so that you can use it on your website, whatever you want to do. So this is a good way to practice your skills on 3D modeling and not have to pay a lot of money. And if you do want to use the file for the 3D model, then you can just pay the 50 bucks to Pix4D. It's still worth it. All right, I hope this was helpful. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time or something like that.